Chapter 51 Earth 101, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. I'm 20, just as it says here. Min Ho's vibrant and solemn voice guided the hunter to the part on his ID that showed his age. Your rank is quite high. Why are you working for the association? You could be in any guild you want. Ah, uh, I don't always have the time you see. Min Ho responded, sheepishly scratching the back of his head as the man confirmed his identity. He moved on to the front of the blue gate that was situated 30 meters away from the construction site. I'm so happy, even though I received my hunter rank four months ago but this is the first time I am entering a dungeon because I have been so busy. The boy optimistically stares at the gate but all that bright expression soon became a charade of confusion as the gate began to reduce. The swirling blue energy of the gate slowly reduced and they could tell. The gate has been cleared. Min Ho yelled in horror. Following his horror were the long legs of a certain light-skinned man with jet-black hair. His clothes were tattered and the stain of blood had dried on them. He staggered forward seeing Min Ho and slowly fell on the boy's shoulder as he spoke softly. I'm back, all the men that were preparing to enter the gate including the agent that was checking them in all ran to meet this man. Who is he? The agent that checked Min Ho in asked. I have no idea, but he said he is back. Min Ho responded to him. Please if you don't mind, the association will take care of him. No, I will. What? It is my duty to help him. That I can't let them take him, they aren't nice people. Beck Min Ho had always had a chivalrous nature since he was a kid, it was what always led him into the arms and legs of trouble in various situations. Sir, you don't even know him. He knows me. Ha! Huh. The agent removed his shades and rolled his eyes down to Min Ho in an irritated manner, then he remembers Min. Ho is a rank B hunter. He sighed and pocketed put his shades back. Okay then. He turned away. Min Ho struggled with Wraith's weight for a few steps then stopped and looked back. I need help, Dot. The men around acted like they didn't hear him. I'll pay. All of them came running. The antiseptic and somewhat bitter smell snuck into Wraith's nose before his eyes opened to the white ceiling and bright lead lights of the hospital room. He widened his eyes and flung up shouting. I'm back. Noting the dotting difference of the furniture of this place, the nurses whom he could see glimpses of thanks to the transparent glass in the center of the door. Everything looked like he was in the right place. He sighed. I was scared, I thought I had come to another realm or something. Gently, he laid back on the bed and continued to stare at the ceiling. After a few minutes of boredom, the door slid open. A doctor with an entourage of other doctors entered the hospital room. There was a distinct difference between this man and the doctors that were behind him which made it so obvious that this man was the main doctor his face, he had a white beard with a face full of wrinkles yet he was taller and broader than the others. He read through Wraith's chat. Young man, you can wake up now. The man said. The other doctors mumbled from behind even they, didn't know that Wraith was pretending to be asleep. TCH. Wraith opened his eyes and sat up. I suppose my time in this luxurious hospital is over since I am a castaway noble who has nowhere to stay. Wraith's brief speech blankly dazed all of them. Well, thanks for the information but your time in this luxurious hospital is not over. And I suppose you won't be able to provide us with your family's information seeing that you are a castaway. Noble. The man quoted that noble with a space emphasis. I like this man, he's sharp. Wraith looked around. Where am I though? You are in Seoul National University Hospital. Can I have your name? What? Which country is that in? The man who was writing down Wraith's information paused and looked at him. South Korea. What's that? This man. Did he show any signs of amnesia? No, sir. To be particular we didn't check but there were no symptoms or need for us to check sir. One of the doctors behind him responded. Young man. 
What is your name? Raven Wraith. I, what an interesting name, which country are you from? Homei Empire but I obtained residency in the free city of Kavano. The doctor paused and turned to the other doctors. I think you see now the reason why to conduct mental tests. Yes sir, we apologize sir. The twenty dot something dot year dot old dot looking male doctor ahead of the rest responded with a bow on behalf of the others. Wraith exchanged glances. It might be hard for the doctors to figure out but it was not the same for him. His fears. Sir, you say this country is South. South Korea. The doctor responded. What about this world? What is the name of this world? The doctor heaved a sigh but responded to him. I guess you can say Milky Way Galaxy or Earth. But of course, a lot has changed seeing humans begin to awaken so our dear Earth is now like a fantasy world. But I don't think I need to tell you these since the reports say you single-handedly cleared a rank C gate. Wraith's focus was long gone from what the man was saying. His index finger was curved beneath his chin. Fuck, I really came to another world. I'm fucked, I'm so fucked. Slide another person entered the hospital room, bowing respectfully to the doctors, particularly the one in front of them. He also was wearing a green hospital scrub and as it would suggest, on his chest was the name tag, Surgeon Beck Min Ho. Ah Min Ho dot ya, this guy you brought in. I think there is a need to do a mental check on him. You can take care of that since you are a neurosurgeon yourself. Eh. Min Ho was left dazed as the doctors walked outside leaving him to the stranger in front of him. Chapter 52 Earth 101, 2 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Min Ho was seated there for about 15 minutes and didn't say a word. He felt awkward. He has always been a shy guy, to begin with, it didn't matter if it was male or female, hell it was even worse with females. But like his timid stature would suggest, he was very naive, but brilliant seeing that he became a neurosurgeon at such young age he must be a genius. So, you saved me. Wraith spoke after coming out of the turmoil of thoughts. He hadn't quite figured everything out. But it was beginning to add up if he considered the fact that the rut was created by Archons. He has heard of the Celestial Realm, Human Realm, and Fiendish Realm. And Valmak never knew that the rut existed which meant the Human Realm that they know is not the rut but rather this Earth. Besides, one cannot fully call the rut a Human Realm since there are other races, Elves, dwarves, and beastkins, a general term that put all these three races together was demi. Human. While humanity is not the only race in the rut, humanity is the main race. Yes, I did. It was a very odd thing. You cleared a rank D gate on your own, the association was going to take you away, so I had to save you. His language is weird, but oddly, I have no trouble understanding him, and the case seems vice versa too. Is this the doing of the abyss? If it is then why? What is your name? Min Ho, okay, Min Ho. I have something important to tell you. It might sound crazy but believe me, I'm not crazy. I should mind what I say because of the code. Wraith began to explain to Min Ho the fact that he came from another world and was hunting in a gate, leaving out a lot of details and only focusing on the part where the gate is supposed to take him back to his world but he came out here also, he mentioned nothing about Felfium. Ah, uh, I see. Min. Ho nodded his head, at first when Wraith started his story, it was absurd. The young man was about to consider doing a mental checkup for real but as he listened to Wraith and saw the look on his face, he decided to respect him by believing him. Min Ho stood up after hearing all this. I understand, but maybe we should keep this in between us for now. If the association hears of something like this, I'm sure they will take you into custody. Hmm. Wraith nodded. He's a nice guy, I didn't expect him to believe me so easily, maybe I should have told him about my power. Nah, let's leave that. I will monitor you closely while in the hospital and you can stay in my house after you are discharged at least till you find a way to return home. Again, his chivalrous nature. 
Wraith's eyes squirmed with glittering eyeballs. Ah, you are so nice. Thank you. Ah, 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 his expression of gratitude made Min Ho so awkward that all he could was release lame laughter. Then please take care. I'm a bit busy so I have to go back, also the association would be coming here soon. You can just tell them you are a foreigner who came to see me. Min Ho was right on that note. Even though Wraith's hair and skin were looking like theirs, with those beautiful heterochromia eyes, anyone would argue his origin. It only made sense that he tells them he is a foreigner. Min Ho nodded awkwardly and left the hospital room. A few minutes after he has left, two men in black suits and shades entered. Wraith sat cross-legged with his eyes closed and suddenly opened them, they couldn't resist that vibe of sagacity that he exuded but he truly was used to sitting like that. I am Sun John Su, an agent from the association. He introduced himself, his black hair was slicked back and shining like he had used a moisturizer. He was the same agent that was in the abandoned construction site where Wraith came out from the gate. And this is my colleague. Okay Hyun. We are both from the association, ah. Uh. He made a pause due to Wraith's odd exclamation which looked like he was recognizing them based on something bad he had heard before now. Sir. Nothing. It seems that M.I.N. the M.O. guy was right. So, what have you come here for? Wraith asked them. Regarding the D-rank gate that you cleared, we have come to get some clarity and information. Okay, Wraith nodded as the agent spoke. So, did you go in with other hunters or you went in alone? Other hunters? Yes, other hunters like yourself. Heroes are hunters in the human realm, a dot but why the fuck are you helping now, you've never done it in times I needed you. Wraith looked down at the system but that was the end of it, no response. The agents looked at Wraith with anticipative eyes as he took his time to respond to them. I went in alone. There was no one with me, and it was a goblin dungeon. The goblins were not that strong but the numbers were enormous if someone had gone with me. I'm not sure they would have made it back alive. Yes, that was why the gate was left for that long. It is ranked as D but all of a sudden the magical power of the gate rose from rank D to C but that was not recorded because we weren't so sure. We were about to confirm this when you came out of the gate and cleared it. I see, if the magical power rose then it must have been because of the Goblin King. Goblin King isn't something that happens now and then but when it happens the goblins are always stronger than the norms. Ah, uh, I see. You seem knowledgeable. That is because I took classes before doing the Archon's trial, sir, if you don't mind. Can we ask what your rank is? My rank? Yes, your hunter rank, now that I think about it. I've never been ranked, I didn't even register with the association, the agent leaned forward on his seat. That is a punishable offense to enter a gate without a license but I am willing to let it slide if you promise to come to the association for rank evaluation and register with us. Wraith gasped. The least he wants is to get marked by the law enforcers of this world again, he knew how much trouble it caused the last time. Wraith nodded in agreement. Dot the association agent gave him a card. You can call me here, I will arrange a discreet evaluation any time you are ready. Also, please do not tell anyone about this. Wraith nodded with a smile and the association agents stood up and walked out. Sunbeam. Why did you want to evaluate him? Contrary to how I thought this would go you were extremely nice to him. He cleared a gate belonging to the association without approval, we should be using that against him. Agent Ok Hyun asked as they walked into the elevator that took them to the lower floors. Let me ask you, Hyun, to single-handedly clear a rank D, no a rank C dungeon, who do you think can do that rank S? Exactly, and how many rank S hunters does our country have? Seven. Of all seven, how many works for the association? None. Now, you know why I was being nice. He concluded as the walked out of the elevator. Agent Ok Hyun who took some time to reason what he said belatedly ran out of the elevator to catch up to him. 
Sunidim are you saying that guy might be an S rank? How did a slow dot witted guy like you even make it to the association? Agen Zhang that S U complained as they got out of the hospital and entered a black Mercedes Benz that was waiting for them in front of the towering hospital. Falfium. Cania, the ninth realm, twelve narrow, square towers scattered in a seemingly random pattern, but were built for an ideal defense and were connected by large, massive walls made of black stone. Refined windows are scattered thinly across the walls in a seemingly random pattern, along with asymmetric crenellations for archers and artillery and a great gate with wide doors. Above the sky of this black castle was a rumbling crimson sky that spread a significant red color across the whole realm. Cania was known to be a realm that wasn't meant for all because of the properties of its demon lord. In his throne room, at the end of a red carpet that rolled from the entrance to these three dot step stairs and finally to the feet of the golden throne seat was Duke Floros, so human in all features except for the two horns that protruded from his forehead granting him the signature of the devil himself. So, the Fenrir escaped. How's that my business? He said to his retainer who bowed meters away from him. I wasn't the one that put Fenrir there. Those bastards in the upper realm expect me to always clean after their mess. He groaned leaning forward. He paused for a few minutes then his eyes brightened. Wait, you mentioned that he was freed by that Valmac. Yes, your highness. Shaxa's Valmac. Yes, your highness. The duke suddenly licked his upper lips. Looks like I found a way to challenge Shaxa's authority. Chapter 53 Earth 101, 3, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Oh oh dot this is delicious. Slurp slurp Wraith struggled to express his enjoyment because he couldn't make time to look up as he gobbled up the ramion that was in front of him. I know right, it is even more delicious when I used some of my secret formulas to mix it. We'll try it when we get to my place. Min Ho replied gesticulating with the wooden chopsticks in his hand compared to Wraith whose hand was messed up because he struggled with using the chopsticks. At least now he's even better, the first time he tried it some weeks ago, they kept falling off his hand and he frustratingly dropped it and ate with his hand. His company had brought an atmosphere of humor to the hospital. It has been one week since Wraith has been in the hospital and he is already popular. His looks were one thing, he was pretty average but what stood out was his eyes. Yes, those damn heterochromia eyes that people used to stare at with scornful gazes. In this world, Wraith was adored because of it. Although many would often address him as Raven. He was most popular among the old patients and the nurses. You still don't want to go yet. Min Ho pointed out the question as Wraith feigned ignorance when he talked about showing him some secret recipe when they get home. He sighed. He had been pestering Wraith to leave the hospital and move to his house but the strange fellow had been so hung up on staying with the people in the hospital even though he was long due to being discharged from the hospital, he still stayed and walked around in the hospital patient where. He dropped the disposable Ramian plastic on the table where he was cross-legged seated and looked at Min Ho who was on the chair opposite the table. Towards the window was a table and chair, not just your regular table and chair but an exquisite, glass. Made one, just like the one you find in the office of the head of a department. The ventilation of the room was enduring and sat well with the neat arrangement of furniture which was very few. Opposite Wraith and Minho was a flat dot screen television that was hung on the wall. I like it here, why bother to leave? Even you live here most of the time. Wraith pointed out, shrugging his shoulders. Ah. You're right. Minho sighed and leaned into the chair after dropping his Ramian plastic. He observed Wraith who stood up and began to look around with his hands behind his back, for the first time almost looking like his age. Do you want to tell me? About your home. Your own earth. Minho said, with hesitation as he completed his statement. It's not earth. Ha. Huh. Wraith's unexpected response pulled his body forward as he sought to pay attention. My human world looks just like this one but it is different and it is not called Earth, it is called the Rut. We have several countries, I think altogether there are 20.3 countries including free cities. 
Of all 50.3, Pomei Empire is the greatest, well arguably because Virto Mount 2 is extraordinary but they don't mix with the others and separate it from us by the sea. Your world sounds so interesting. Trust me, I have been to an even more interesting world. Wraith said, as his mind journeyed down a recent and hurtful memory lane. I can't waste time like this. First I must get stronger and return to Felfium to save Valmak. He said looking at his clenched fist. Is something wrong? Min Ho asked, worried about his sudden change in mood. I'm sorry Min Mu. It's Min Ho. Ah, uh, Min Ho. Do you know where other dungeons are situation or field monster locations? Other dungeons as in gates. Yes, and field monsters. I can tell you about other dungeons but I am not too sure about field monsters. Since the only place we can find monsters are in the gates. Well, the Americans and Japanese have succeeded in subjugating a monster while it is alive and has even been able to come to a common understanding but Korea is far from that area. Hmm so, unlike the Rut. They don't have field monsters. Wraith rubbed his chin with his index finger. Can you take me to these other dungeons or gates that you know of? He asked Min Ho with a definite resolve which humbled Min Ho and filled his replies with honorifics. It won't be easy. Why? Number 1, the association has a fundamental right over all the gates whether new or old. Number 2, gates are largely owned by guilds, so we can get sued for clearing it, or better still, we will get no payment and the loot will be taken from us. Hmm that is reasonable. This association. Are they the same people that came to my hospital room? Yes, those ones. Hmm. I see. There was a brief five seconds of silence between the two. Can I borrow your phone M-I-N-M-O, Min Ho, sorry, my bad. Wraith smiled and stretched his palm forward. Min Ho slowly dropped the android smartphone on his hand while locking his gaze on Wraith's suspicious smiling face before finally letting him go. Rare walked outside hastily and began to type the number from the card he received. Equals hello. Yes, this is Raven Wraith. I was given this card by a person from the association. Equals ah, so it is you. The one who is due for evaluation. Ha. Huh. Ah, yes, evaluation. Equals okay. Please come to the association for evaluation. Tell them you have a reservation with Agent Zhang that s you, okay, thank you, Wraith hung up and, what the fuck. He flared as he turned back to see Min Ho calmly standing beside him. I didn't sense him. Was it because he didn't have any killing intent? Wraith's perception by far is far from okay. Transcendent sense enabled him to sense an incoming attack which meant he lacks bare perception. I no need to explain, Hyung. I heard everything. You know nothing about this world, the association is desperate, they will use you and throw you away. Still, I have to be able to enter dungeons. I understand, then you should have just talked to me about it. That I disagree with doesn't mean I won't help you. Ah, uh, you will. Of course, but you have to trust me with everything. Trust huh? A memory plagued him in that instance causing a baleful thought to cross Wraith's mind. Well, I don't have any worries, I can just kill him if he betrays my trust. His eyes squinted into a slit in that millisecond. Okay, so when do we go to the association? First let's get you some clothes. I might get used to seeing you in these scrubs. Min Ho said and patted Wraith's high shoulders as he walked away with the pride of a rich man. Wraith followed after looking at his back for a few more seconds. Chapter 54 Rank Evaluation You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wraith's eyes shimmered as they were drawn to the tall skyscraper that loomed over the surrounding buildings. The skyscraper was a gleaming tower of glass and steel, with a modern and sleek design that made it stand out from the rest of the city's architecture. As he got closer, Wraith noticed the sign above the entrance to the building. It read, Seoul Main Branch, in bold, silver letters that glinted in the sunlight. 
The entrance was an impressive set of double doors made of polished wood and metal, with two security guards in black suits, stationed nearby. Wraith couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and anticipation as he approached the doors. He probably had a picture or two while Min Ho was driving but this exceeded his expectations. The beauty and splendor, he just couldn't wait to see how the interior will blow his mind and as expected, as he stepped inside, Wraith was immediately struck by the grandeur of the crowded lobby. It was a vast, open space with high ceilings and a polished marble floor. There were comfortable seating areas and sleek, modern art pieces on display. A receptionist greeted him and Min Ho warmly, do you have a reservation or are you just coming today? Yes, we have a reservation. Min Ho replied and showed him the card the association agent had given to Wraith. Please head to the elevators, floor 41, he said pointing them to the elevator that was ahead of them in less than 10 meters. Thank you, Min Ho said and both of them departed from the receptionist. Wraith couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement as he rode the elevator up to the upper floors. Kling the elevator stopped and its doors opened to a broad hall of several rooms. The place was not crowded like the lobby but a few agents could be seen walking to and fro, entering into chambers on both sides of the hall and coming out of them. Before the child was greeted by another receptionist but her reception area was smaller compared to the one in the lobby. Welcome sirs, do you have a reservation? Yes. Min Ho responded. What is the agent's name? Min Ho turned to Wraith, who shrugged his shoulders in response. Min Ho shook his head slowly at Wraith and dropped the card on the table. Oh, Agent Zhang de Su. Ah, right. Zhang Min Ho glared at him, he smiled awkwardly and looked the other way round. All right please go to Chamber 3, the receptionist said to them. Locating Chamber 3 was easy as it was the third door towards the left side of the hall. As they enter inside, a white room with a large crystal in the center was revealed before them. Wraith's eyes widened with further excitement. Agent John Su was with other agents standing beside the crystal and seemed to be busy with the mechanical handling of the monitor that was connected to the base of the crystal through wires, the crystal sat on a golden platform that converts the magic energy it reads into numerical form and then is displayed on the computer. Hunter Wraith you came. Agent Zhang Su despite his business cited them immediately after the door opened. He walked up to them and greeted them both. Shall we go straight to the point then? Agent Zhang Su said, guiding Wraith to the front of the crystal while Min Ho waited for him in a mini lobby towards one corner of the room. This is a measuring crystal, they were created by fusions of magic crystals gotten from gates. I can surely tell you this is the best magic energy measuring device you will ever find anywhere. He expressed while punching the monitor that was adjacent to the crystal. He turned to Wraith, you can place your hand and more of your magic energy into it. Wraith did as he was told and placed his hand on the crystal, slowly pouring his energy into it. That I hope it works, I don't have magic energy, a large amount of cosmotic energy has been detected, absorbing energy. No, Wraith retracted his hand from the crystal immediately. What are you doing? Put your hand on it. Agent Zhang Su said to him immediately and looked back at the computer. Dot this is a very very bad situation, I have a bad feeling about what might happen here, Wraith slowly places his hand on the crystal. Absorbing Cosmotic Energy Wraith closed his eyes, trying not to think about anything while Zhang Su's eyes were glued to the monitor widened. Sunbeam. How is this possible? The junior agent behind him gaped as he saw the number displayed on the computer rise with speed. Beep the number made a pause at 3443-560. And went back to zero. Then displayed an F rank. What? Is this thing faulty? Crack just as John that as you thought that, he heard a crack and looked toward Wraith. The crystal that was supposed to be shimmering with a sky blue color had gone completely gray and void of glow. Cosmotic energy has drastically increased, you have gained 1054 cosmotic energy, your body will undergo a modification in 0.10.59.59, how? 
John Dadesu cried as he ran around the crystal that he was so proud of a few moments ago. I just poured my energy into it. Wraith said with a sorry expression. Ah. John Dadesu sighed and stopped at his front. I understand. The reading before it turned to zero. I have never seen anything like that. It seems something is wrong with the crystal I will issue you a temporary license and we will call you back for a new evaluation. How's that? Agent John Dotsu's voice was void of the vigor from before. It's fine. So far I will be able to enter dungeons. Yes. I will contact you tomorrow, for a dungeon that needs to be cleared. If tomorrow is okay by you, alright. Wraith nodded his head, looking at the crystal one last time and feeling sorry for it before he joined Min. Ho at the mini lobby. After a little bit of waiting time, a temporary license with an F rank evaluation was issued to Wraith, even if it was temporary he was disgusted at the rank since it was the least but he also had to put in the factor that the crystal could measure magic energy and he didn't have magic energy. Hence the extent of his strength could not be measured by the standards of this world, but he wasn't feeling bad at all, thanks to the crystal he got more energy and now he is staring down at the weird message that says his mode will be modified in 10 hours which prompted Wraith to head to head to Min Ho's apartment so he could be away from everyone because of whatever was going to happen. Min Ho dropped him at his place and returned to the hospital. Chapter 55 Merchant, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Starting Modification, Crack, Arc. Wraith let out an unexpected and sudden scream as a deep, intense pain radiated throughout his bones. The sharp and burning pain shot through his bones. The sensation felt like it was emanating from the very core of his body and spreading outwards. As the modification continued, the pain intensified and became more unbearable, causing him to writhe and scream in agony. His muscles began to undergo spasms, adding to the discomfort. Wraith began to feel dizzy or lightheaded due to the overwhelming pain. He started to sweat profusely as he curled on the ceramic tile. As the pain continued it became so intense that Wraith's eyeballs rolled up and sank into his lead, his heartbeat began to get slower, and he began to gasp having a hard time breathing, he continued in that state for ten more minutes before saliva began to stream down his open mouth. You have died from intense and unbearable pain, modification has been completed, all impurities have been purged by excess cosmotic energy, your blood vessels and muscles have been reinforced, due to the suffering and the pain you experienced your endurance stat has risen by plus 25 points, your body has been modified, you have gained plus 15 stats increase in all your stats, due to your new body. Passive skill, heat resistance has reached level max, you have gained a new passive skill, cold resistance, S, LV max, due to tidal effect, one who devours death, you will be revived, you have gained plus 5 stats points, the darkness within you has increased by a tremendous amount, there is an unlikely synergy between the cosmotic energy and shadow energy within your body but one will eventually devour the other, which will contribute greatly to the path you will thread, ah. Wraith gasped back to reality, panting and holding his chest tightly as his breath slowly returned to the normal rate. Luckily he was not wearing any shirt but the pants he had was damp and the liquids that were excreted from his skin, the choking and disgusting odor of this smell invaded his olfactory organ the moment he stood up. Even he had to tighten his nose to resist the toxic odor as he cleaned the whole ground and made his way to the bathroom. So you are saying to me. That the crystal was damaged. Yes sir, John that as you sheepishly stood in front of the association president after reporting all that happened a few days ago. This man, were you able to get him on our side? I intend to get on his good side sir. Are you sure of your judgment agent John Daresu? What if he turns out to be just another low rank? I trust my gut feeling president. Something about him is different. By looks alone, the man didn't seem far from age from John Daresu but no one would dare to be deceived, since everyone that has been in the association long enough knows that this is just a kickback of his abilities. He looked down at the report on his table with his eyes emitting a subtle blue glow. If you say so. I trust your judgment, then would you like to make him a merchant? Sir. 
A merchant. Can I do that? Sure. With that, he will have the exclusive right to clear gates alone. Zhang Dasu bowed deeply in front of the association. President. Thank you, sir. He shouted before heading out. The first thing he did was fix an appointment with Wraith. Wraith stood in the backyard of Min Ho's house while wandering around shirtless he happened to discover a training ground and on one side was a rack of wooden swords. Just what he was seeking. A sword so that he would be able to test the sword skill he had. He held the sword to his front. You have activated skill, way of the sword, incomplete, with fluid movements and lightning. Fast strikes, Wraith began to perform a series of intricate sword techniques he had never seen nor heard of, moving back and forth across the clearing with precision and grace, striking imaginary opponents from different angles, blocking incoming attacks, and executing quick footwork to evade potential strikes. He paused for a moment shocked at the way he moved the sword without even knowing where to move the sword to. Wow, this is the way sword skills work. In essence, no, this was not the way sword skills worked. Of all skills sword skills were the hardest to obtain, one had to master the basics and know them well, compared to magic skills which can be learned from tomes or rune crystals. Of course, a melee fighter can learn some skills from a tome of rune crystal but only skills like quick movement, or stealth, not skills that involve delicate mastering such as the sword. Wraith continued to swing the sword from different angles, performing horizontal and vertical strikes, as well as thrusts and cuts while focusing on executing each movement with accuracy and power, striking imaginary opponents in front of him. A wide smile formed on Wraith's lips as the hot sun kissed his skin and pearls of sweat began to form on his body, he got intense and began to execute more advanced techniques, performing complex combinations of strikes and footwork with lightning. Fast speed. He weaved in and out of different stances, pivoting on his feet and shifting his weight to maintain balance and control, all the things he could never have gotten a hang of so easily, thanks to the passive skill, Devourer, Wraith was a different breed from whether the heroes or hunter. Despite the intensity of his training, Wraith remained calm and focused, his mind sharp and alert, his breathing steady, inhaling deeply through his nose and exhaling slowly through his mouth, keeping his mind focused on the movements of his sword. He was consumed in every moment of strike such that the sun began to go down and he had no idea how much time had passed. As the sun began to set in the sky, casting long shadows across the backyard, Wraith finally put down his wooden sword. He looked at his palm which had small calloused from holding th hilt of the wooden sword for long hours. Wraith had been training since the early afternoon and now the sky above him was dark. With this skill, everything will be different. Wraith smiled. The skill was impressive, to think that something as amazing as this was incomplete. Wraith began a memory journey back to when he took the paper on the floor when he was imprisoned. It was in front of a skeleton that seemed to have died while sitting and Wraith remembered very well that he devoured that skeleton. A lot of things were confusing and it seems the abyss is just as confused as Wraith was when it came to this passive skill devourer. That gave Wraith a hint, maybe the habit didn't give him that skill. However, that speculation also left a lot of questions. Wraith scratched his head. I don't want to stress myself by thinking too much, I'm sure the answer will fall in place as time goes on, he knew for sure that the skill would serve him well in the future battles he will face. As Wraith turned to leave the backyard, he flustered back in the shock of seeing Min Ho who stood there looking at him, dazed. Wow. What? How long have you been here? Wraith asked as he regained his composure. Towards the ending part. Min Ho replied to him with a bright smile. Hyung Nim. Please teach me how to do that. Min Ho's eyes sparkled towards him. His demeanor had changed all of a sudden. It is reasonable, no one would see Wraith exhibit such a jaw-dot-dropping sword technique and not respect him. Ha ha. This will take a while. Wraith tapped Min Ho's shoulders and walked inside. Right. Hyung Nim, you have a message from the association. And I think you will need your own phone. Wraith paused and looked back at Min Ho with a blank and squinted glare, 
a glare that made goosebumps run through his skin. Dot did they find out what I did? What message? He inquired. Min Ho could tell, something about this man changed in just a few hours of leaving him alone. Um, there, well. He was void of speech for the first few seconds as he stared at Wraith's slitted eyes which were different from the ones he was used to seeing in the past week. They said they would like to give you a merchant contract. Merchant. Like they want me to be selling stuff. Ha 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 no. Min Ho giggled and began to give a better explanation. Dot, you see about 50 years ago, there was an outbreak of gates. A lot of gates but in return humans also awakened new powers that gave them the ability to fight these gate monsters, wait, do you guys hear the voice of the world too? Min Ho was puzzled by his question. We don't hear any voice, we just awaken the power within us, whatever power you awaken is the power you get to have all your life, except someone goes through reawakening. The main point of what I want to say is that these gates appeared all around the world till today they still appear at an alarming rate. Merchant is a concept created by the Universal Association for Hunters that do not want to be affiliated with guilds or with the association. So, they clear gates for the association and receive 90% of the reward while also receiving a commission fee from the association. Wraith rubbed his chin. Impressive, so I can clear gates and not get affiliated with anyone. Yes, but you must be very powerful to be made a merchant. At first, I didn't understand why the agent decided to make you one but seeing you now. Hi Ungnim, please make me your personal assistant. He shouted bowing 90 degrees toward Wraith. Chapter 56 Merchant, 2 The Sword of Baal You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wraith and John. As you sat in a room, facing each other and at a table between them, on that table was a file. John. As you pulled out the paper on the file and slipped it to Wraith. As Wraith collected the paper, he suddenly remembered and feared that he might not be able to read Earth's written language. But contrary to his thoughts, it was just like he was writing a text from the rut. Their language was complex and based on rune words. But if one was subjected to diligent learning from childhood, writing would be easy as speaking. Wraith's eyes widened. I will receive 100% for the first for months. And a commission of $1.5 million from the association, every month. Zhang did as you nodded diligently. You are worth that much Hunter Raven, whoa, I thought my rank came out as F. Wraith said with a disbelieving expression, sizing up John Dadesu with a gaze that clearly does not seem to believe they were being for real. Is it too small for someone like him? John Dadesu feared as he misinterpreted Wraith's face. Perhaps it was the distant change between his present face and his three days ago face. We can raise it to two million dollars. Please accept $2 million for four months' commissions. You will have access to a lot of gates that even guilds wouldn't dare touch. I see. Wraith grinned inwardly, he understood the situation that just played out and didn't refute it. He must have thought I wasn't impressed and decided to increase it. Wraith locked his fingers and leaned forward, leaning on his knees, he was donned in a black button-down collar shirt tucked into black trousers completed with a nicely polished black shoe and brown coat. Then what do we need to do? Agent John. Su's expression brightened. Oh, yes you just need to sign here, 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 and here. He pointed out the places turning over the pages of the contract paper. Wraith skillfully twirled the pen in his hands as he scribbled down a simple R. R. Signature. His writing is neat and fine. John. As you noticed as Wraith completed the signing and passed it to him. Can I enter a dun, a gate, today? Yes of course. However, I will dedicate an assistant to you who will help you with the loot. Hmm. I already have one. Ah, uh, okay. It's fine. We can proceed to a gate then if you want. Do you want to get any equipment? as a new merchant, it will be on the house. Also, you will need a merchant name, going forward. A sword, I need a sword. And you can just use Raven of Death for my merchant name. 
Oh dot okay, John that s you replied shaking off his surprised expression. Please follow me. I will show you the weapon store. As Wraith followed John that s you, he took out the black smartphone that Min Ho just got for him earlier this morning. With Min Ho's number being the only number on his phone he dialed it. Hello, Hyung Nim. Time for work, but Hyung Nim, I am really you see Momo. The association agent is pestering me to allow him to get me another assistant, give me the location sir. I'll send it to you later, that he said and hung up the phone. Who is that? A slim man with a lined face and a full head of silver hair, that was neatly groomed to one side who Min Ho was standing in front of, asked as he slowly looked up at his face. My friend. The hunter you have been hanging out with these days. I guess everything eventually reaches your ear. What do you expect? This is my hospital. You've been doing so well son, don't ruin your future by hanging out with the wrong person. Thank you father for the advice. Min Ho bowed quickly and rushed out of the chairman's office. What an arrogant kid. The man said as he picked up the telephone and called his assistant. Monitor Min Ho for me. After a few minutes drive, a black car parked in front of a departmental store. Right from the storefront, Wraith was greeted by a towering display of gleaming swords and other weapons mounted on the transparent glass. As Wraith entered the store he was faced with an endless arrangement of swords. Each sword was set in a custom dot made stand, with a spotlight illuminating its intricate design and razor dot sharp edge, there were short swords, saber swords, daggers, long swords, katana, and different unique sword designs, there was even one that carried the shape of a shark. But that was not what Rare was looking for. He needed something that would feel just like the wooden sword he used to train with a metal strong enough to hold his cosmic energy. In the center of the store, a circular platform rises from the floor, displaying the most exquisite and expensive swords in the collection. As Wraith walked around the platform looking for what to choose, the black ring Volmac gave him suddenly tightened around his fingers. Wraith took a pause but it stopped. What is this? He wondered as he stared down at the ring in his hands. Is everything okay sir? The sales girl who was not too far away from him asked. Consumed in what he was doing Wraith saw no need to spare his time to reply to her since it wouldn't help him in any way. He looked up and walked back, as he took the second step backward he felt the tightening more intense now. Shit. He groaned silently while clenching his hand to endure the pain as he looked up, you have discovered a demonic sword, what? Agent John Daresu who was at the receptionist stand came to meet Wraith. Hunter Wraith. That sword. Wraith said pointing to a sleek, dark dot purple sword with no crossguard, but the sheath and the hilt of the sword were a matching color. Ah, that black one. John Daresu said looking exactly where Wraith was pointing. Don't blame him, he has never really been good with colors. Okay. He nodded after confirming Wraith's request, then went back to the receptionist. Weapon information, a weapon forged with the blood of Baal, a now forgotten and dead demon lord who was considered to be the strongest demon to ever lived, this weapon has been lost over the ages and has been reforged over and over again by the legendary blacksmith throughout the world before it was lost. Because the weapon is forged from Baal, it has a trait of devouring the strength of its foes, with every slash and cut, it will regenerate its user's life with the blood of its foe. Durability 10,090 attack power 4,780 This weapon is a bound item, you can only use it if it accepts your blood. Chapter 57 The Disguise Gate, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio how suspicious Wraith curved his index finger beneath his chin as he looked down at the messages. Bale. A dead demon lord. He wondered as the sword was passed down by automation and the salesperson brought it out from the horizontal slot where it was. Does he really want to buy this, it is attractive at first glance but I've seen several people complain that the sword won't even open. The receptionist whispered to Agent John Daresu, who paid attention to her but stuck his eyes to Wraith. He then turned his gaze to the receptionist and turned to the salesperson that slipped the sword into a long box. 
It is fine. He chose it. I don't know what he is up to but I don't care. I should use this opportunity to ascertain his qualities. Let's take him to a rank B gate. Or is that too much, maybe a rank C, let's see if he is the one that cleared that dungeon. Even if he dies, it won't be on the association, since he signed the document. Agent John that as you brought to the sword to Wraith who pulled it out of the box and walked out of the store, not caring about the box of the sword that was on the ground. You can form a bond with this weapon by feeding it your blood, whether or not it will accept you as its master depends on it, Rajd grabbed a pen from the receptionist's table, stab and stabbed it into his hand, throwing them into a short frenzy of fear. He held the sword with his wounded hand as he walked outside the store. The sword of Baal has formed a bond with you, you are forever bound with the sword of Baal, it will always find you wherever you are, you can summon the sword by its name, do you want to give the sword a new name or stick with the old name, yes, I'd love to, you can't grant a name, you don't even know your name, is this fucker shitting me? Wraith glared with a pulsating vein on his forehead. Swish with swiftness, he removed the sword from its sheath and looked at the black blade. Dot HM, it is okay, he nodded and put it back into its sheath before entering the car. Meanwhile from inside the store, the receptionist's jaw dropped, and refused to close back. Agent John that as you turned back to the receptionist with a smirk. No one knew the origin of the sword, they just knew that this weird and cold dot looking hunter just did what several hundreds of hunters including one S dot rank hunter couldn't do. I can swear it wasn't supposed to work, even Mullah couldn't use it. He muttered but no one cared. Wraith held his chest as the car drove to the location of the gate he was to hunt. The more his darkness grew the more he felt empty within himself, caring lesser about people's feelings and the change was drastic and noticeable. Wraith thought of what king of person he would be if his darkness grew so enormously or when he finally unlocks the attribute, Shadow Lord, after all, this all started after the Shadow Lord attribute was unlocked. While in the midst of that thought Wraith began to wonder about how to find his true name. The Abyss kept insisting that he doesn't know his true name which means that he has one. Hunter Wraith Agent Zhang that Su softly called out to him, helping him out of his thoughts. The car had gotten to the destination. The large blue swirling gate with an oval shape stood right there at the entrance of the market, which was flanked by several stores but was empty. The gate emerged three days ago during the market activity which had thrown people in utter disarray, the association immediately arrived to put things under control while waiting for one of the merchants to be free to clear the gates. But with the number of gates they have the merchants are too busy and also some of them have other things to attend to, simply put, the association couldn't just order them around because of their strength and importance in society and to the association. Which eventually led to the association president's suggestion of making Wraith a merchant even though his rank wasn't confirmed. It didn't matter, as long as he doesn't die. The association is in need of merchants now more than ever especially if they don't want to be outdone by the guilds. Hmm. Wraith looked at the gate that stood in front of him like a portal to another world. Hyungnim. You came. He replied gently looking back to see the young man cladded in golden lion armor. What the hell is this? Wraith looked at him with expressive unbelief, he chuckled and turned to the gate. My bad, I just thought, Hunter Min Ho, with this much armor it will be hard for you to move. Zhang that Su enlightened him. Ah. Not like he didn't know before, he was just over dot prepared due to his first time finally entering a gate. He loosened some part of the armor leaving only the van braces, shoulder guard, breastplate, and golden boots. Hunter Wraith. You don't need anything else. It is fine. I'm good. He is going to enter a gate without armor. Agent Zhang that Su glanced at his face, expecting even a tiny thread of nervousness but he found none. There were no emotions of any sort on his face. Just a focused gaze that was looking into the gate. Momo. Hyungnim it's Min Ho, it's Momo from now on. The moment we enter this gate, everything you see stays between us. Wraith tilted his head backward to look at Min Ho. Tell anyone and I'll slit your throat. 
he made it clear with narrowed eyes that plunged spears into Min Ho who got flustered immediately. Heek. Gotten sir. Min Ho stole glances at him. Since the day before yesterday, Hyungnim has changed. Did something happen? He doesn't seem angry or sad but he doesn't seem happy too. Maybe it is because of his world. I have made necessary preparations. Agent Zhang did as you said as he walked closer to Wraith and Min Ho. Dot are you sure you want to enter this gate alone? He asked looking at Wraith's face. It's fine. We'll be good. Wraith replied to him, tapping Min Ho, and the next, picked him up completely from the floor and threw him into the gate, and walked in gently afterward. Several minutes passed and Agent Zhang did as you couldn't still believe what he saw. He conveniently picked up a human being. I know it is possible but that would be in the case of tankers that have a large build and enormous strength. But in the case of Hunter Wraith, he is thin although he seems to have a good physique, still, it makes no sense. GRIZZZZZZTT while he was contemplating, the gate suddenly began a disturbance. WHOSH pulling in the breezes, and almost sweeping Agent Zhang.SU with it. What is going on? Agent Zhang.SU shouted to the monitoring agent who was behind him. We have no idea, sir. They raised their voices but it was still lost in the turbulent wave of air. GRIZZTT the gate began to throw sparks and began to change colors. From blue, it went to purple. The agent's eyes widened. No. Way. A gate changing color was a rare occurrence and is often called. A disguise gate. It is not called a disguise gate because it is hiding its strength but rather because it contains two distant kinds of monsters but the gate magic energy is measured according to only the weaker one. Contact the association immediately, fast. Agent Zhang that SU shouted. Even though he had meant to test out Wraith's abilities this was too much for him. Shit, he can't survive a disguise gate. Agent Zhang.Su's lips trembled as he looked at the purple gate that seemed to have grown larger. Meanwhile. Hyungnim. The gate entrance is gone. Min Ho looked back but where the gate should be standing was nothing but the view of trees. They stood amidst a dark and foreboding forest, filled with twisted trees and thorny underbrush. The air, thick with the smell of damp earth and decaying leaves, and the only sounds are the occasional hoot of an owl or the scurry of small animals in the undergrowth. Hyungnim what are we going to do? Let's clear the gate first. Wraith finally replied to him after several disturbances. As Wraith and Minho ventured deeper into the forest, the first thing they noticed was the wooden structures, crude rough hewn as if they were jacked from the trees themselves. Wraith paused. The place they were at seemed empty but there was no doubt about it. This was the beginning of their area. Wraith did not know much about gate according to first.hand experience but he could still process some thoughts based on the conversations he would often hear at the store when he was at Kavanaugh. Hyungnim, aren't these wooden houses? Min Ho muttered his question as he found it hard to navigate his vision through the forest which wasn't the same for Wraith. Step back and watch. Wraith said to him, pulling his jacket for him to hold and also rolling up his sleeve. How about you come outside and let's just make this easy for both of us. Wraith shouted, his voice piercing into the dark forest and all around it. Chapter 58 The Disguise Gate 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Guildmaster. The association called. A tall and brisk man shouted as he jammed into the office of Lee Se Chul. Lee Se Chul, also tall and well dot built man with a strong face gently. He collected the phone and leaned back, his long brown hair flowed down his back and glistened in the rays of sunlight that escaped from the glass window behind him. Hello. If it isn't President Nam Jean Huan. To what do I owe this unexpected call? Wait don't tell me you miss me or some, one of the reasons why I don't like you is that you talk too much despite being an S rank. The president cut his statement short with his brief and harsh explanation causing Lee Se, Chul to frown. You see, there's a disguise gate not too far from your guild headquarters, 
a local marketplace somewhere I don't know you want to ask for my help and look at your big mouth insult me. I don't care. I can call other guild masters, I am just doing you a favor. It will only be minutes before the media gets wind of this disguise gate, I know you have always wanted your face out there as the guild master of the Gojo Guild. This might be your time to shine, a disguise gate doesn't happen often. As much as he wanted to cut the association president's tongue, he gritted his teeth and clenched his fist, then replied after exhaling. I will be there. Good. One of the reasons why I like you is that you can be reasoned with. Smash clatter Lee Se Dot Chul smashed the phone on the table with his incredible strength, breaking the entire table, and nothing was left of it, just shattered glasses spread across his front. Guild Master The brisk young man gasped and exclaimed, he could never get used to his Guild Master's anger tantrum. How many tables have I changed now? 60.7 or is it even 60.9? the guild's hotline. Ah. He cried internally as he dragged himself slowly out of Lee Say. Chul's office. Fuck you. Gu one. Shik, Lee Say. Chul groaned as he stood up and harshly grabbed his suit jacket that was sitting on the headrest of his chair. Wraith stood legs apart, standing with the black sword on the ground in between his legs, and as he looked into the dark woods, and could clearly see the creatures that hid. He looked around once more, Compared to the number of monsters he could see, there were the wooden houses were more. Did do go on a pilgrim journey or something, he wondered as he gave them their last chance to come out themselves but they refused. They seemed to be hiding from something. The mistake Wraith made was thinking they were hiding from him. You are using skill, instant move, you are using skill, way of the sword, Wraith dashed into the darkness like a blur, his sword gleaming in the dim light as he unsheathed it within a flash. As he sped past the first one he spun around, his sword flashing out in a wide arc and the blade slicing through the creature's neck as it leaped towards Wraith from behind thinking that Wraith didn't see it. Wraith paused as the green head with protruded tusk from the mouth rolled away into the underbrush. God damn it, I let you save yourself and you get cocky. Wraith said as he glanced back at the headless orc with a stocky body and impressive physique. The other two he was originally dashing towards roared in anger and charged at him with their crude axes raised high. Wraith didn't flinch. You are using skill, instant move, with the substantial increase in his cosmic energy, he could now use any skill without having to worry about running out of energy, at least having to worry for a while. In an elongated battle, we can't say the same. Wraith pierced forward like black lighting, darting out his sword to block the first orc's blow, and with a sharp spin around, the orc's arm fell on the ground. The injured orc howled in pain, but Wraith didn't give him a chance to recover. He lunged forward and drove his sword deep into the orc's chest. The last orc was bigger and stronger than the other two but Wraith did not seem phased by that fact. He looked at the last orc with slitted eyes and his heterochromia eyes for the first time glowed a common white color in the thick darkness. The creature struck by the fear of the figure that stood as if the darkness was its clothing and with a white deadly gaze, began to slowly trace its steps backward. Skill, intimidation, has been activated, the orc monster has been stricken with the fear state, you are using skill, instant move, before it could move any further, wraith with a sudden burst of speed, darted forward with his sword, piercing the orc's heart. The creature collapsed to the ground, dead. Wraith stood there for a moment catching his breath as the blood on his sword slowly sank into the black blade of the sword, unnoticed. You can absorb the monster's tune crystal, because of certain reasons you cannot gain any skill when you absorb a monster's rune crystal, but your cosmic energy will increase, ah shit. Wraith suddenly remembered something and groaned in frustration. I wanted to die before actually starting, how can I get ahead of myself and kill the monsters? Wraith blamed himself but stopped and turned back to look at the frozen Minho. I was wrong. I was wrong. This guy is beyond amazing. Orcs. Ors. Orcs may be rank C monsters but because of their physique and intelligence, they are considered almost a B rank. Yet he dealt with three of them so easily. Min Ho's eyeballs shook with a squirmy smile on his face. 
Hey. Momo. Sir. He jacked out of his thoughts immediately after he heard Wraith's voice. Pick the crystals. Wraith said as he turned back pretending to not care about the super shocked expression on Minho's face. He 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 he. Did you see that? I feel like an actual big shot commanding him like that. He twitched his eyebrows with a smug expression as he walked forward. Hyungnim, Hyung. Wait for me. Min Ho shouted as he followed Wraith, whose steady steps were so fast he had trouble catching up. After walking deeper into the forest, Wraith was met by a long and tall wooden wall with a gate standing in the middle, this space was already out of the forest and was a clearing. Eddie E.T. the forest was meant to hide their location or something. Even Wraith could tell that much seeing how they built houses within the forest. Or they were some orcs leaving outside Wraith wandered both ways but shifted his attention to what was in front of him. The walls were made from thick logs, hewn, and stacked to form a rough barrier. The gate was made from the same materials, but had a more intricate design, with sharp wooden spikes and metal reinforcements. How spectacular. They are more like humans in the Stone Age. He muttered. Orcs are known for their intelligence. Even though they are monsters they can community with each other. Min Ho helped with some information, which was very helpful and thoughtful of him since the Abyss has decided to not feed Wraith with the dungeon information. Not even one piece of information, it also isn't asking me to complete the trial. Hyungnim, how are we going to get inside? Wait are we even going to go inside? Maybe we should just go back and tell the association, the orcs live in a colony. We could get killed if we go there alone. Wraith shook his head slowly, confusing Minho further. What? The young doctor sought clarification with a shaky voice. We can't go back. Hyungnim, what do you mean we can't go back? Minho asked, his voice getting more unstable and shaky, his forehead was pale and sweat ran down his face. You'll be fine Minho. I told you, I'm the only one that will be fighting. Stay outside. Wraith commanded as he looked up. He looked at Min. Ho one more time and brought out the Fenrir dagger. If there's any need to protect yourself, don't hesitate to slay anyone, even if it's human, with shaking hands, Min Ho collected the dagger. Air leap, thwack. Wraith lunged into the air and over the tall wall, landing right into the middle of the circled orcs, with two orcs wrestling with each other. Everything went silent as a loud thud was heard and dust filled the entire place. As the dust cleared, the orcs with anticipative and curious gazes leaning forward, waited to see who it was that had made a dramatic entrance into a strength challenge. Within the clearing dust that was showered with the subtle illumination of the crescent moon under the dark skies was a figure that stood on two thin legs, one hand in its pocket and a sword connected to the other hand. Kiyaku. Human. The orc that was seated on a special seat amidst the encircling shouted, slamming its hands on the arms of his chair with, it wasn't a friendly welcome. The raging growls of the orc that surrounded Wraith confirmed that he wasn't welcome and this fight was going to get very very messy. But Wraith stood there with a puzzled expression. Why the fuck can I understand a monster? Chapter 59 The Disguise Gate, 3 Wraith vs Orc Chief, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio From the moment he entered Felfium and could understand their language Wraith had suspected the interference of the Abyss, even when he came to Earth 2, in all these cases it was reasonable but with a monster. He could understand a monster. Kerg Kuwake, kill the human. The Orc Chief shouted pointing his fingers forward. Amazing grace. Wraith was covered in a horde of green orcs that battered him to death with clubs and axes. You have died, level up, you have gained 4 stats points, level up, you have gained 4 stat points, due to title effect one who devours death, you will be revived, the orcs separated as they confirmed the human void of life. Yurjk, weak, weak human. Dot did these motherfuckers just call me weak. Fu Wraith released a slow breath, the orcs at first did not he had woken up as they had returned to chattering with each other with scoffs and laughs. 
POW suddenly, with a blast, an orc's large body shot across the crowd of orcs, crashing right beside the orc chief's seat. The shocked orc chief turned its gaze to the direction the body was coming from. Cure, how? He growled, standing up from his seat. The other orc turned to Wraith again with a fierce gaze. Two levels. I wonder if I can gain more levels if I die. Wraith twirled the sword of Bale, looking at the orc chief with an intimidating grin. Quawargark, that human must die. The glare worked, the orc chief screamed at the top of his voice pointing to Wraith. Grabbing the hilt of the sword tightly, Wraith drew it out of its scabbard. The voices of the orc soared into the dark sky as they charged at him with their weapons glinting under the subtle illumination of the moonlight. You are using skill, way of the sword, your proficiency with this skill has increased, Wraith charged towards them, his sword flashing under the moonlight as he deflected their attacks no matter which angle it came from it was as if he was expecting it. Passive skill, transcendent sense, has leveled up, with so many enemies, there were so many threads of attack to deal with but thanks to his speed he could manage at least for now. Instant move, Wraith disappeared and appeared away from the cluster of orcs that was becoming annoying to deal with. With space in between, he could now handle things from a better angle with precision. The orcs turned back to him and rushed towards him letting out war cries as they charged at him. For the first set of orcs that reached him, Wish whoosh wish smash with movement backed by speed, his sword sliced through their flesh and bones with ease, their blood splattering across his face and clothes and the rest sinking into the black blade. He dealt a blow into the next orc with a strength that belied his size, throwing the orc away twenty meters and still tumbling it until it came to a stop, dead. The orcs looked back at the dead orc and looked at Wraith who had killed an orc with his bare fist. Kwiweku, don't fear. The human is weak. The orc chief's cry replenished the orc's morale and strength, their war cries rose into the sky again as they rushed at Wraith. Not fearing one bit, he danced through them with his sword blurry as he cut through the air. The orcs were no match for him and soon began to fall one by one under the grace of his sword. The moonlight bathed the entire place with an aesthetic makeup that exalted the peace of a violent night. Despite their numbers, they soon began to falter as Wraith cut a bloody swath through them. They were no match for his skill and their confidence was beginning to wane as they saw their brothers fall before him. But Wraith showed no mercy, pressing the attack even as they began to retreat. Only a handful of warriors stayed to fight but as Wraith began to take what seemed to them as heavy steps towards them, they backed away slowly from the deadly figure before them. Each step was like a striking thunder into their heart and as Wraith's cold glare sank into their eyes, they shivered with fear. Korgal, monster. Monster. They shouted throwing away their weapons and running with their hands in the air. Kawieg yukwia quirk quirk, stop. Don't run. Fight. Fight. Wraith stood tall, his chest heaving as he glared at his remaining. His clothes, hair, and face were drenched in blood, and his sword arm shook with exhaustion. He couldn't tell how long it has been since he started and he didn't care. Dot the orc chief stared at Wraith for a few seconds before suddenly grabbing his chair and thrashing it with one pull. Beneath the chair was a long pail that Wraith had no idea what it was. The orc grabbed the pole and her hair. With a loud groaning scream, he pulled the pole out of the ground, causing the ground to shake and crack open. Slowly, the orc chief turned to Wraith with a smile as he rested the sledgehammer on his shoulders with a smug face that was so absurd considering its tusk and braided brown hair that was almost like a M.O. hawk their steps toward each other started as gentle and steady but soon the two of them began to sprint toward each other. The orc steps were heavy and thundering, Wraith's, light and speedy with his eyes glued to the sledgehammer. As the two came closer for collusion, the orc swung his weapon in a wide arc but Wraith was too fast, instant move, he darted in and out of the orc space, slashing the monster's arm. Shit, it's shallow. He muttered and he flung out of the area as the orc's hammer came crashing down on where he was standing, splattering the hard rocks. Wraith with this scene evidence knew one blow of that hammer would be deadly, if not deadly he would probably be rendered all bones broken. 
The orc roared in anger and dashed at Wraith, but he was ready, with swiftness he ducked under the orcs and sliced his leg, immediately pulling a retreat backward with a backflip. The orc stumbled but quickly recovered and followed him, swinging his hammer in a downward arc aiming for Wraith's head. WHOSSSH Wraith tilted his whole body to the side, avoiding the hammer by a hair's breadth and still finding ample time within that pinch, he counterattacks with a sword thrust but the orc blocked with his hammer. Wraith leaped back immediately, with his eyes scanning for the monster's weakness. The orc dashed forward again with a lousy and wide arc, with a sidestep, Wraith slashed the orc's back misjudging the orc's intellectual for a moment, the orc made a quick turn in that tiny moment and caught Wraith off guard swinging the sledgehammer toward him. Even though Wraith made a quick tone and used black armor which turned his entire body black he still stumbled back. Shit, did he suddenly increase his speed while we were fighting. While Wraith was sure he was superior in speed he wasn't too sure about strength, since he couldn't see the orc's strength. You are using the skill, Truth Seeker, you can see the status information of the target, target information, name. Kawaiak Orc Chief HP, 4, 201 slash 5, 200 rank. BAP 6700 DP, 15300 skill. Thunder Smash, in eh, Wraith's mouth dropped. He even has a skill and has not used it. He scoffed. This bastard. Wraith darted a deadly glare into the monster and he returned the gesture, their eyes stayed locked on each other for the next few seconds. With the orc's impressive defensive power, it was clear to Wraith that he couldn't win this fight with brute force, he had to rely on his nimbleness and speed. He could boast of incredible stats thanks to the plus 15 increase in all his stats due to his body being modified because he absorbed a lot of cosmic energy. He had lasted this long. It was a miracle, he would have died so many times originally. But this was not enough, as much as Wraith knew he needed to fail and die to become stronger, he wanted to win this battle with this cocky orc and show him who's boss. Just like that time with the goblin too. Wraith looked down at his status cautiously staring at the orc that stood from afar and searched him for weaknesses. His speed stat was on 83, and he had 13 available stat points all 13 to speed. Your speed stats has risen by 13 points, he said as he swung his sword and began to walk majestically towards the orc that gnarled at him holding his sledgehammer to one side with both hands. Instant move, with even more force of speed, Wraith's body blurred and disappeared and the next time he could be seen was as the blurry image slashed the orc's leg. The orc grunted and swung its hammer immediately at Wraith, he was adapting to Wraith's quickness by forcing himself to react immediately after getting hit. But Wraith was too fast, using, air leap, he soared into the air with the moonlight casting a subtle and deadly stream of white light on the blade of his sword as slashed a downward arc on the orc but the orc blocked it with the long length of his hammer pole. The orc pushed Wraith back with ease and tumbled him to the ground, his hammer rose into the air about to smash down on his fallen opponent but Wraith was gone. He appeared behind the orc and slashed the orc's back, his sword biting deep into the orc's green flesh. The orc chief let out a tremendous cry and turned to Wraith with a reddened face, its eyes were bloodshot as it glared at Wraith with an evident breath of rage. I hope Hyungnim is okay. Min Ho shook with more fear as he heard the extra loud cry. He had been hearing the war noises but it was part of the battle but this one was different, it made his heart shake and his limbs trembled. It was a very very bad angry roar. The sky began to rumble as the orc panted slowly locking his gaze on Wraith. Is he finally going to use his skill? Woohoo! Wraith heaved a very big exhale and readied himself as the orc chief rose his hammer into the sky. The sky rumbling continued more intensively, and thundering began to erupt between the dark clouds. Large streaks of lightning gathered around the dark cloud that swirled over Wraith and the orc, it was difficult to tell in particular who it was coming for. Kiwogwag, thunder smash. With full force, the massive and large dancing streak of lightning poured on Wraith erupting and raising the entire ground and even blasting away the wooden houses nearby. Hiik, Hyungnim. Min Ho screamed as he saw the lightning descend and heard the thunderous sound of the environment shattering. 
Despite his fears, he pushed his shaky legs forward with a furrowed brow of determination and began to run forward. Congratulations, you have died from an impressive skill attack from a rank B monster, your strength stat has risen by plus 4 due to the nature of the monster that killed you, your endurance stat has risen by plus 5, level up. You have gained plus 4 stats points, level up. You have gained plus 4 stats points, level up. You have gained plus 4 stats points, level up. You have gained plus 4 stats points. Chapter 60, Bonus, The Disguise Gate, 4. Wraith vs. Orc Chief, 2, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Hu 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 the orc stood like a victor, panting with his broad shoulders and waiting for the dust caused by scattered debris to clear when another hunter dashed in with a black dagger in his hand. Ha! Ah. Min Ho's legs got faster and faster with each step he took conjured with that awful war cry that he let out as he charged to the orc chief putting his fears aside. Kiuk, weak. Th orc was clearly judging his speed based on that of Wraith, he swung his hammer and arc from the side and towards Min Ho but the boy phased through the hammer leaving an afterimage that disappeared and left the orc confused. Arf. Stab Min Ho drove the dagger into the orc's back from beyond with a lowered brow, and eyes that have gathered an immense amount of confidence in a split second, even though his hands were shaking he drove the dagger deep into the monster's back twisting it. A-A-A-T-R-R-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-K-K-K-K-H-H-K-K-K, the monster let out a loud cry that soared once more into the sky. He grabbed Min Ho from his back immediately and threw him away flinging him over to his front, Min Ho tumbled on the ground towards Wraith, forgetting the dagger on the orc's back. He finally came to a stop with his fresh and handsome skin bruised. He was close to where Wraith's body lay. Hyungnim. Hyungnim. He cried with a shaky voice crawling towards Wraith. What the fuck are you doing? Wraith opened his eyes and shifted them to Min Ho who was sobbing. Hyung. I asked you not to come in. Hyung I thought you died. I did. Although I could have easily blocked that attack with black armor. But I had to level up. And thanks to that I got four whooping levels. Wraith grinned and stood up. Just stay behind and don't get caught up in this as I round it up. He stated to him as he stepped out of the most of dust, leaving Min Ho with a cool visual of his tall back. Q, ha. Huh. You are shocked right. Wraith chuckled at the orc and twirled his sword. How about we put an end to this? The orc was panting but Wraith approached it with renewed vigor. He pointed his sword at the orc with a taunting smirk on his face. Kieg guk kuek, fullo. Human cheat. Nah, I'm not cheating this is just my skill. Did I say you were cheating when you used that thunder skill? Give me a break. Even though the orc couldn't understand the Korean language with the odd accent that was coming from Wraith, he looked like he had an idea of what Wraith was saying. The orc chief roared in anger, swinging his hammer with renewed ferocity. Wraith dodged and weaved, but the hammer came dangerously close to landing a deadly blow, Wraith stumbled back, narrowly avoiding the hammer as it smashed into the ground, sending up a shower of dirt and debris. The orc advanced immediately toward Wraith with his hammer raised high. Wraith sees this as a brief opening in the monster's wild attack. Instant move, way of the sword, he blurred forward, aiming forward at the orc's exposed flank. Clang! As if the monster was expecting it, he spun around in that moment, smashing his hammer on Wraith's sword causing a massive impact that sent both of them flying. Wraith landed right on his feet with a gentle and soft step but the orc rolled away, tumbling before it came to a stop. He stood immediately but was already cleared out of breath and very fatigued and his panting was evident with the lousy movement of his shoulders with every breath. Not wasting any more time the orc charged at Wraith with a roar and as he reached Wraith, he slammed his hammer into the ground where Wraith was standing, sending a shower of dirt and rocks. Wraith sprang to his feet, spinning his sword in a tight circle before launching into a series of quick, precise strikes. The orc chief blocked every attack with his hammer, each blow ringing out like a bell as the metals changed against each other. 
The Sword of Baal danced through the air with each strike aiming to exploit the weaknesses of the monster's defense. The orc chief roared again, swinging his hammer in a wild arc that forced Wraith to backpedal. But Wraith was quick, hurtling in and out of his opponent's range with lightning.fast strikes that whittled away at the orc's strength. The orc chief was beginning to tire, his blows coming slower and less accurate as the battle wore on. Wraith saw his opening and pounced, launching a flurry of strikes that caught the orc chief off guard. The first blow sliced through the air, aimed at the orc's exposed neck. The second strike was a feint, designed to draw the orc's attention away from his vulnerable midsection. The third strike was a lightning.fast thrust, aimed directly at the orc's heart. You have exhausted your cosmic energy, skill, way of the sword has been deactivated due to insufficient energy, yeah. Wraith's sword was already on its way to the orc's heart almost stopped but Wraith pushed the sword forward with his immense strength, the orc's reaction speed was already slow and couldn't catch up as Wraith's black sword plunged deep into the orc's chest. The orc let out a gurgling roar as Wraith pulled out the sword, the orc staggered backward, his massive hammer falling from his hand as he slumped to his knees. Wraith stood over him, breathing heavily as he stared down at the dying orc. The Sword of Bale can absorb the Orc Chief's stats and skill to increase its durability and power, wow. Wraith looked at the sword, wondering what to do to make it absorb the monster's stat. With a guess of what to do, he stabbed the sword into the monster's head, leaving the sword to stand atop his head. Worm. The sword shook as it began to pull out all the monster's blood and wriggle softly. After a while, the Orc's body was pale and the stopped wriggling. Wraith pulled out the sword and could feel the change. Is it because we are bonded? He thought and looked at the sword's info again. Weapon information, a weapon forged with the blood of Baal, a now forgotten and dead demon lord who was considered to be the strongest demon to ever lived, this weapon has been lost over the ages and has been reforged over and over again by the legendary blacksmith throughout the world before it was lost. Because the weapon is forged from Baal, it has a trait of devouring the strength of its foes, with every slash and cut, it will regenerate its user's life with the blood of its foe. Durability 11,090 attack power 4,900 skills Thunder strikes, B, this weapon is a bound item, you can only use it if it accepts your blood. Sword skill info, thunder strikes, during an intense battle, there is a 30% chance of the sword releasing a tremendous wave of lightning with 3.4 consequent strikes. Skill is passive and cannot be actively used. Wraith was impressed with what he saw. Hero status, name. Raven Wraith true name. Unknown class. Child of Death HP.4000-4000H. Slash 21 level. 10 aura points, A.P. 00, 00 shadow points, S.P. 71, locked, cosmic points, C.P. 000, 000, 000 title. Celestia Slayer, one who devours death, chosen by the claws of failure, destined for damnation, I do not fear death, I am suicidal, the revered dust attributes, traits. The darkness beyond death, the dissatisfaction failure brings, Shadow Lord, Locked, Skills, Passive. Devourer, EX, LV4. Transcendent Sense, S, LV20. Intimidation, S, LV10. Dark Vision, A, LV2. Heat Resistance, S, LV Max. Cold Resistance, S, LV Max. Poison Resistance, R, LV1, Skills, Active, Truth Seeker, S, LV2. Lava Ration, A, LV6. Instant Move, B, LV9. Air Leap, C, LV7. Black Armor, D, LV1. Way of the Sword, SSS, LV5, Incomplete, Stats. Strength. 116. Speed. 96. Stamina. 65. Intelligence. 145. 
Endurance. 124. Will. 12 available stat points. 16. Dot my stats are looking good, at this rate, I wonder how they will be looking in level 100. Heek heek hyungnim. Hyungnim. You won. Min Ho came running. Yes. Pick up the crystals from the dead orcs around. Okay Hyungnim. Min Ho stepped forward to the orc in front but was stopped by Wraith. Leave that one for me. Okay, Hyungnim. Min Ho obediently walked away and to the few corpses of orcs that lay around. Wraith moved closer to the orc. Thnav OM, weird, there's no crystal showing. The monster's crystal has been absorbed when its stat and skill were absorbed by, the Sword of Bale, eh. The sword absorbs the crystal too. Of course, it absorbed the crystal, it is called a rune crystal, that is the core of the monster where the skill and stat of the monster is Rach slaps his face softly upon his late realization. By the way Hyungnim. I'm done with the crystals and since you have defeated the gate boss, shouldn't the portal appear now? You are right, it didn't take this long that time with the goblins. Wraith looked around, he squinted at his eyes. Min Ho, didn't you see a horde of orcs run past you? No. Min Ho replied from behind him. Still it doesn't matter if some orc escaped, the only requirement for closing a gate is killing its boss. You are right. What bothers me is where the orcs ran to. Not even a sight of them is left. Wraith looked around the silent night. Something is off. Hyungnim, what do we do? What else? We will follow the trail of the orcs that ran away.